Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Demon Souls Remake. And in this part of the Let's Play walkthrough, we are going to go back to Boletaria and complete level 1-3, which is the Inner Ward Archstone. Uh, since we have completed, uh, basically, so as of this walkthrough, we have completed every other world. So now we can go back to 1-3, that's just the way I like to do it. However, you can technically do this once you complete any other world. So you need the soul of an Archdemon in order to get the fog wall just past Tower Knight to go away. Um, so you can do this at any time after you do that. Uh, but it is somewhat of a difficult level, so I recommend doing it later. Uh, but it's really up to you when you want to do it, as long as you have at least one Archdemon soul. Quick disclaimer about this guide. This is a live playthrough. I am recording as I play. So, you know, you're going to hear some background noise. You may hear a plane overhead. My dog may bark. You know, it may just be a little bit of background noise. It's not like a clean cut edited guide. Um, okay, so with that out of the way, I'll show you my character stats. Currently level 56, uh, 25 vitality, 11 intelligence, 27 endurance, 33 strength, 12 dex, 10 magic, 11 faith, 7 luck. I have a longsword plus 10 and a silver catalyst, which I just have soul arrow for this. So it's a very basic spell, just to sort of uh, aggro things. I have the fluted armor set, the cling ring, and the thief ring, and then some grass and a noble's lotus. I did start this character as a knight, so I've sort of been doing a strength build. Um, before we enter level 1-3, we need to visit uh, Stockpile Thomas. And the reason we need to visit him is because as you cleared uh, Boletaria 1-1 one, one, and 1-2 one, and then went on to Stonefang uh, World 2, killing certain fat officials in those stages uh, rewards pieces of their set. So we need to bring those pieces with us. Um, the official's cap is in 1-3. One one that is the final part of the set. So uh, let's go ahead and get the official's, uh, official's clothes. And then we'll grab the gloves as well, which are... Where are they? Did I pass them? Official's gloves, first one right there. Okay, and then we're also going to grab the official's leggings. And the reason we want to do this is because there is an NPC inside of level 1-3 that we have to set free. And the only way to do that is to disguise ourselves as a fat official and then in a very specific place, and then that will gain us access to their prison. So if you haven't already gotten those pieces, just kill all the fat officials that you come across um, in Stonefang. And then I think there might be one in 1-2 as well. Or actually, I think maybe all three are in Stonefang except for the official's cap in 1-3, but just kill any fat official you come across. And as long as you have those three pieces of gear, you're good to go. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's warp to the inner ward. And there's a lot to do in 1-3. And before I even enter 1-3, uh, I'm going to turn around and show you a door that was locked. And this door is technically in 1-2 in the Lord's Path. So let's just backtrack here for a second. Okay. And then this door right here is locked. The key to it is in level 1-3. So we're going to get that kind of deep into 1-3, and we're not going to backtrack until close to the end. Uh, inside of that door is a prison that uh, guards an NPC named Bior of the Twin Fangs. And Bior of the Twin Fangs is one of the two strongest warriors in Boletaria. Uh, his brother, Valorfax, um, was the first one to leave Boletaria in search of help for, for the land once uh, the fog descended. So he, Valorfax is spoken about early on. Oh my god, this dog is... I keep punching the dog. I don't need to do that. <laughs> um, okay, so there's a, another dog over here. The thief ring is really, really important uh, for the dogs. It sort of allows you to aggro them one at a time. Before I go any further, I do want to head down this alleyway and show you another door that's locked. Uh, we will get the key for this. So the key for this is actually located in the same place as Bior of the Twin Fangs. We need to get one key to get another key, and then we're going to come back here. So this is basically the last door we're going to open before the boss. And behind that door is Yuria the Witch, and that's what you need the uh, the official set for, is to free Yuria the Witch back there. Okay, so let's pick up all the treasure here. Some souls, some grass, some more souls. Okay, so... Uh, there's a booby trap up here. It's a cart full of molten boulders. We can pick up this treasure pretty much no problem. And then the boulders come rolling down the hill. We get to stand behind this wall and wait for them. And that only ever happens once. Uh, the orbs or the balls will stay where they were. 
Um, and then, yeah, once you approach this fat official, the cutscene plays, and he sort of summons the guards to follow him, and then he drops the portcullis, and something disgusting but kind of funny happens. The fat official drops the portcullis on one of his own. Okay, so uh, it, it's possible that a, sword, uh, a soldier is going to bust through that real quick, but something you should know is on every subsequent uh, time you visit 1-3, there will be soldiers here. Uh, so just be aware of that. Yeah, these guys will be on the exterior. Uh, they will not be behind uh, those barrels. There, there will still be enemies behind the barrels, but just not these guys. All right, so with them dead, uh, I'm just double-checking to make sure we got everything around here. We will, uh, basically, the purpose of this stage is to get to the other side of that portcullis, uh, portcullis, but we have to take the long way around. Okay, so in here, there is a spear soldier as well as a sword soldier. So, the spear soldier, it's actually a halberd soldier now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, the halberd soldier is quite deadly. Uh, he has a really long range, and he has a poke attack down this narrow alley. And there are several narrow alleys that we've got to contend with here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down here first, and there's a treasure down here, but you got to be careful because there's also a, a gentleman with a crossbow on a platform uh, just across from us who's trying to kill us. Uh, but first, I'm going to backtrack a little bit, and there's an enemy right here, this guy. Uh, I don't know this the name of this enemy, but he's basically like a, a ninja, <laughs> and he deals a lot of damage. Uh, so what you can do is basically I'll just show you the other way to get here, and uh, instead of... Yeah, we're right back here. This is that narrow alley. So we just came, uh, we just went down these stairs. But we're going to proceed this way first. And then we're going to go up this ladder here. Okay, I don't think there's anything back here on the, in the inverted world, there's a ceramic coin here in, I think, pure white or pure black world tendency. All right, so this crossbow guy hasn't exactly woken up yet. Oh, now he has. So that's six new moon grass. Really, really great treasure there. All right. Unfortunately, these picnic benches are in our way. Let's go ahead and kill him, but don't proceed up the stairs just yet. Instead, you want to come down here and grab, I believe this is the Blue Eye Knight gloves? Yeah, the Blue Eye Knight gauntlets. Great. So that's part of the Blue Eye Knight set. And now we can proceed up the stairs. However, there's another booby trap. Oh, God, there's a ninja there. I didn't even see him. I legit didn't see him. He's such a ninja. Okay. So let him come down. He has a long combo chain that you do want to be careful with. Okay, so he's dead, and then there's a second ninja there as well. Sometimes you can avoid aggroing these guys, but it looks like we were unable to do so. All right, so be sure to heal up before we go up the stairs too far. Okay, and then at some point, that boulder is going to come for us. So let that happen, and then I don't recommend ducking into any of these side alleyways. And the reason for that is because these ninja guys are usually down those alleyways. So come down here, there's nothing, and then... Right, if we go down here, uh, it's just a crossbow guy. Right, but there is also a ninja down that alleyway. For some reason, they both came after me, which is a little strange. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this guy first, and then there is a ninja up here. I feel bad calling them ninjas, but that's what I'm going to call them. Anyway, this is a trap, so as soon as you run down here, just turn around. Yep, there he is. Wow, I sort of just... That was, that was a bloody affair. Don't do that. I basically just kept attacking him while he was attacking me. Never recommended. Okay, so I think that's it. Yep, we got that. And we got that. Great. All right, so head back up the stairs. And then you got to be very careful around these parts. Uh, real quick, I'll just jump into photo mode to show you a couple things. This fat official here, he holds the rusted... Uh, yeah, the iron key ring, sorry. He holds the iron key ring, which opens the door in 1-2 that I described earlier. So that's the fat official we're actually after, for the most part here. That said, however, there is a red-eye knight right here. So just kite him out as safely as you can. Red-eye knights deal more damage than blue-eye knights. Uh, but they basically have the same exact attacks, same vulnerabilities. Oh, God. But they just deal more damage, more stun there. They are just stronger than their blue counterparts. But we can still parry them, still stick a sword in their gut, and kill them. Okay, drop some new moon grass. Before we go to the fog wall, 
we're gonna head into the building where the Red Eye Knight was. And we are gonna... There's an ambush in here that I honestly completely forgot about. Um, anyway, <laughs> kill those guys. And then this doorway is blocked, but we can break all this uh, debris. It's just chairs and tables. And this is actually gonna bring us to the Dregling Merchant once again. So this is his final appearance here in 1-3. He does not appear in 1-4, but in case you need anything, pay him a visit, throw him some coin, and then uh, pick up some full moon grass, I guess. Never never hurts. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the Dregling Merchant right there, in case you gotta replenish your, your stocks. Alright, and then out this door, there's a treasure over here, but you do still want to be careful because the uh, those crossbow archers are still up there. That's the great sword, And then... Pretty sure that's it for here. Let me just drop down, and now we can go through the fog wall. Okay. So you can drop down here. I don't... I actually can't remember if there's anything down here. No, there's not. There's no treasure down here, so don't bother dropping down here. But you can if you want, but you'll just wind up going back to the beginning. All right, so... Oh, my God. He should not have been there just yet. Luckily, the fog wall made us invulnerable. Anyway, there's a two handed sword red eye knight through this fog wall i can't believe he was there that i i would have warned you had i known he would have been right there i was going to talk about him as soon as i got through the fog wall wow okay so this is where things start to get pretty dicey uh there are a lot of enemies here as you can see this ninja just fell and then there's just soldiers kind of everywhere this fat officials here and uh you can try to kite him out he should drop down and then you should be able to fight him. But there's basically just two levels of archers that are trying to come after you. Alright, so just attack him a couple times. Ugh. Okay. And then killing him, he will drop the iron ring, iron key ring. There's also new moon grass. Alright. And then I don't actually recommend killing those guys just yet. Instead, I recommend coming up here and trying your best to deal with these guys as fast as possible. There is a Spear Knight or a Halberd Knight behind us. There's two Spear Knights. Ugh, okay, so luckily these guys are dying in one or two hits, it seems. Great. So now that they're dead, uh, just stand behind here to heal up, and then we're going to kill those crossbow archers here. You know what's funny? I don't know if a crossbow wielder is technically an archer. I don't. I don't know that. Okay, get some late moon grass, and then be very careful because you can sort of vault over these railings and fall down. We obviously don't want to do that. Um, okay, so let's walk down here. Now we can kill these crossbow archers. I don't know if that's what you want to call them. They're probably going to fall. Okay, great. So they're dead. And then I don't think there's anything down here. Oh, there is. Okay, so there's a treasure right there. Uh, let's go ahead and, and get that real quick. It may not be anything too important, but... Okay, storied hero soul. It's not nothing. And then, uh, basically, we just gotta drop down here. Just press forward and circle to vault. And then, uh, just vault again. And then we will quickly run back up to where we were. But now that all those archers are dead, we don't have to worry about too much. It's literally just run back to where you were. Okay. Yeah, I was going to try to just vault over there, but I'm not going to bother doing that. All right, so up the ladder we go. And the funny thing about Souls games is that because the enemies sort of force you to stop and wait and, you know, figure out how to fight them effectively, the levels seem a lot larger, but the vast majority of them are quite small. Because we're already back here where the, where the two-handed sword Red Eye Knight was. All right, and then we're right back where we were before with those archers. Uh, there are several times that we're going to drop down just for the sake of treasure, so just keep that in mind. Uh, one of them is actually the Penetrator Sword, which is uh, really, really effective. So there's also this platform here that I actually kind of forgot about. How do you actually... Right, okay, so... Yes. Okay, so there was actually a ladder here that I totally missed. Sorry about that. I was just so focused on that fat official that I forgot about these ladders. Um, the ladders are obviously another way to get up, but I honestly don't really recommend doing that 
Uh, the reason being because as you're climbing up the ladders, the soldiers will begin to aggro you. And the, the last thing you want is a spear-wielding soldier to be waiting for you as you're climbing a ladder. All right, so headed up to the next level here. There is a ninja. I really got to find the proper name for these guys. All right, there's a treasure back here, but there's also a firebomb thrower, so we got to be careful of him. Some late moon grass back here. There he is. All right. Hit him, and then get some grass. 1-3 is a really good grass farm spot. Right, I don't think there's any reason to vault over this. Nope. All right, there's another booby trap here. This one's easy enough to avoid, though. Yep. See ya. Okay, there's ha Halberd Knight here. So just go ahead and take care of him. And then the camera sort of pans out here, which I kind of like. Uh, there's nothing down there. It's interesting that they put this there, though. I've never vaulted down here, so... I don't know if this is like a kill zone or anything. Anywho, just keep on moving. There's going to be another red eye knight here. I think it's a two handed sword. Yes, it is. Oh, I tried parrying that and failed. All right, so let's go for the backstab or not. All right, some new moon grass. In case you're wondering, you, the only way to get the Red Eye Knight armor is to buy the digital deluxe edition of the game on PSN. I hate that that's the case, but that's the case. All right, so the Penetrator Sword is right here. Uh, what I'm gonna do before we do that is I'm gonna clear this out, and then I'm actually going to uh, come back here after I raise the portcullis because it's such a long trek back. I mean, it's not long, but it's longer than it really needs to be. Uh, and basically, if we were to get that, it the exit is right in front of the portcullis, so we may as well just keep proceeding. But we're going to come back for that treasure. If you are playing in a pure Black World Tendency, there will be uh, Black Phantom Fat Officials that spawn here, so be very careful uh, if that's the case. Okay. So we can proceed down here, and if you're playing in uh, Black or pure Black World Tendency, the primeval demon will spawn right here with these archers. So in case you're looking for him, that's where he is. All right, this guy has dropped some grass. So he's helpful, some soldier's lotus. Uh, and then if you're playing in inverted mode, uh, a coin will be in these barrels. Uh, I, think, I think that's pure white world tendency for those ones. Some unknown hero soul here. And then there's a lot of soldiers on the ground there. So we're not going to deal with those guys just yet. Um, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. It's a bit of a safer route. And pick this up. Some full moon grass. And there's some soldiers that we got to deal with uh, who will likely have their backs turned to us. Oh, no. They don't. So there's a spear soldier as well as a crossbow. Oh, he tried to kick me. Are you kidding me? I know there's a kick in this game. It might be a spear ability. Okay, so he's dead. And as you can see down there... Uh, some of those soldiers are swinging for the fences. Uh, they know I'm here, so they want to do their best to kill me. All right, so as soon as we sort of reach the ground down here, what's going to happen is uh, Ostrava of Boletaria is going to show up. And Ostrava is being chased by a couple of red-eye knights, uh, and we, we're going to have to contend with the fat official. So that's about to happen here. Uh, let's try to kill the fat official quick. Yep, Ostrava has shown up. All right, so once you're ready, be sure to grab the official's cap off of this corpse. And then once you're ready, open up the portcullis. This way Ostrava can get free. And then we have to help him with the red-eye knights. So the portcullis opens. And then we can help Ostrava now. So backstab this guy. Sometimes Ostrava will just run. Oh, I did not mean to hit him. Hopefully he doesn't turn hostile. He did not. So now the Red Eye Knight is after us. But luckily these guys are easy enough to bait into a backstab. Okay, so that's uh, kind of one of the tricky parts of 1-3. Um, and as long as Ostrava doesn't die, he will be sort of hiding out in this little alcove up here that we're going to go to. Right here. He will thank us. And I think he gives us a pure blade stone. Pure clear stone. Great. All right, so sometimes he'll be hiding in this little alcove here. 
Uh, and then Ostrava, for the rest of the stage, will just sort of run back and forth, or walk back and forth from here uh, to the little alleyways that we were going down earlier. And before we proceed through the rest of the stage, we want to get the Penetrator Sword. So we're going to head back up here. And then we are going to vault down right here. Right here. Are you kidding? Vault down, please. Maybe we gotta do it over here? There's a lower wall? Yep, there we go. Alright, so this is the penetrator sword. Or penetrating sword, sorry. And in case you're looking for the penetrator's armor set, it is available in the game, but it's a long convoluted process to get. Um, so yeah, that is basically the first... That's honestly the majority of the level, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, what we're gonna do now is... Since we have the Iron Key Ring, we are going to go rescue Bior of the Twin Fangs. Rescuing Bior of the Twin Fangs uh, is good for two reasons. One, you help out an NPC and you, you know, get access to some items. Um, and then it allows you to rescue another NPC. But, um, actually rescuing rescuing him is not a trigger for rescuing a different NPC. Killing his prison guard is, is the trigger for rescuing another NPC. The biggest benefit to rescuing Bior of the Twin Fangs is that he... He helps you in the boss fight in 1-3. So, if you're looking for a guide of, like, how to fight uh, the boss kind of on your own, I have a guide for that, and I will describe it as I fight him with Bior, but Bior just makes the fight so much easier. Um, okay, so down here in this prison, there is a fat official. He does wield fire, so... Oh, God, I'm stuck. Am I stuck? Wow, I was stuck on that wagon. Okay, so there is a guard here. Careful. We can actually hear the red dragon in 1-2 again. That's funny. I haven't killed him in this playthrough. Alright, so he's gonna... Can I get a backstab? Bro, his tracking is just wild. Alright, there we go. We got a backstab on him. Killing this fat official will reward the bloody... I think the bloody key? Or the bloody iron key? Oops. Bloody iron key. And Bior of the Twin Fangs is in this cell here, so we're gonna open that up. And then all we gotta do is talk to Bior. And you do not have to warp back to the Nexus, um, but Bior is sort of the predecessor to um, the Onion Knight in Dark Souls. Oh my god, Siegmeier, Katarina. Okay, so there's some more treasures down here. Uh, just It's really mostly just souls. I don't think there's any gear here. Uh, but the, uh, the real treasure is actually back even further into 1-2. So now that we have access to here, there's a crystal lizard, and then there is also a corpse back here that you should have been able to see if you visited the Dragling Merchant in um, in 1-2, and it's this corpse right here. I believe this is the Tower Shield. Yeah, so this is the Tower Knight Shield, and the Dragling Merchant was on the other side of this pork list. So that's how you get here. It's all in 1-3, even though this is technically part of 1-2. So we're going to head back to the stage now, and since we have the Bloody Iron Key, we can rescue Yuria the Witch. Yuria the Witch uh, is a spell vendor who sells dark sorceries. Um, and rescuing her allows her to go back to the Nexus on your next reload. And then she sits uh, in the corner, sort of opposite of Sage Rake's Apprentice. I almost went the wrong way. Okay, so heading back into 1-3 from this Archstone... Uh, with the bloody iron key in tow, we are going to just walk all the way to the back alleyway. And there's no enemies back here. So while we're walking there, let's go ahead and equip the official set. Did I not? Oh my god, the official's cap went into my storage. Ugh! Oh, this is frustrating. Sorry, I, I hope that I didn't like blow out the speakers, but I just realized that happened. We need the official's cap, so we unfortunately have to reload this stage. Luckily, we don't have to kill too many enemies in the process, and this will give us an opportunity to just dump a bunch of stuff in storage. I should have really emptied out my inventory before picking that up, but I was just making sure I could rescue Ostrava. Okay, so, Stockpile Thomas, what else do you have? Yeah, definitely drop the Blue Eye Knight Gauntlets. We need all that. We don't need our bow. Um, don't need these Dragling Shields. Yeah, what we need is the official's cap. And it's right here. So that's the official's cap. Just make sure you have the full set on you. 
before you warp back. Go ahead and repair if you need to. And then, you know, we're here, so we may as well spend some souls. Where's the maiden? Sometimes she just disappears. Yeah, so Bjorn of the Twin Fangs is here. He sits by the uh, Archstone of the Chieftain. Okay, seek soul power. Dump a point to strength. All right. So now that we've done all that, and make sure that we have the full set of the official's gear, we can go back to Boletaria. Equipping the official's cap uh, gives your character this little evil grin and causes him or her to laugh. So it's a nice little addition here in the remake. In the original, it didn't do that. Speaking of the original, um, the official set was added in the remake. In the original, though, just the official's cap was needed. Um, but the pants, gloves, and chest piece, I don't think we're even in the original. Um, but in the remake, you need to equip the full set in order to gain access to Yuria's prison area. Okay, where's the other dog? There he is. I knew he was here somewhere. Okay, so with the bloody iron key, we can now open this gate. Okay, and then uh, before I head to Yuria's cell, I'm gonna, or Yuria's prison tower, I'm gonna come down this alleyway and show you something that was added in the remake. So this right here is a stone of ephemeral eyes. However, if you look very closely at this wall, you can see that it is shimmering and there's a door behind it. It is locked, however. This door was added in the remake, and I'll just quickly show you what's behind it. If you just unhook the camera for a second. There is a corpse that will appear here in an inverted mode, um, and it has the penetrator's armor set. In order to open that door, you need a total of 26 ceramic coins. Um, so we're going to head down this alley now, and then towards Yuria's prison tower. The ceramic coins can only be found in the inverted world. Um, and they can only be found under very specific circumstances, either in pure white or pure black world tendency in inverted. And they appear in hidden places, uh, often under barrels or crates or, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, I'm still in the midst of making a guide. I haven't even gotten it myself, uh, but that's how you do it. Okay, so once we're up here, I'll actually show you what happens. So let's just say we don't have the full official set uh, equipped. If we can, e if we use camera mode, we can see that there's a fat official up here uh, near a crank, and then just past him is Yuri the Witch. So the fat official is guarding Yuri the Witch, and the only way to get that fat official to drop this gate or this staircase is to equip the full set. So upon doing that, the fat official laughs, and then as the staircase is dropping, let's pick up two rings: Ring of Magical Nature and Ring of the Accursed. And then the fat official will be friendly, or neutral at least, uh, but if we speak to Yuri the Witch while wearing this garb, uh, the f she will not actually talk to us. And if we talk to her too much while wearing this set, we can actually ruin rescuing her. So don't speak to her yet. Instead, we're gonna fight the fat official, so we can start this off with a classic backstab. And while we do that, uh, be sure to put your regular equipment on, which I didn't fully complete. That's okay though. It actually looked like he was going to attack Yuria. He can't, unless it's just by proxy of attacking you. Um, he cannot just go after Yuria. Okay, so now let's talk to Yuria. She res uh, she thanks us for rescuing her, and then she will go back to the Nexus uh, on her own. So the next time you warp back, she'll be sitting opposite of Sage Frank's apprentice. Okay, so that's sort of all of the big story pieces of 1-3 that we have to get through. Uh, there are no world tendency events outside of the ceramic coins uh, here in 1-3. Um, I guess that's not totally true. Some black phantom enemies will spawn, but there's no, like, no big events that reward gear or anything. Okay, so with all that out of the way, it is now time to go through the final section of this stage, and that is the path up to the boss, which is Penetrator. And... What a lot of people suggest you do, and I'm not totally against this, is just run through everything. Um, that's a perfectly valid strategy. <laughs> it's not one I'm going to employ, but uh, you can do that, and then as soon as you hit the fog wall, just go through it and the enemies go away. Uh, one other thing to note is that since this is our uh, next time through, and the fat official has already dropped the portacolis, we've already killed him, and uh, you know now we're sort of making our way back, 
these uh, axe soldiers are here instead of behind the boxes. So those boxes are now permanently broken. And then if we were to go down that alleyway, we would just have the normal uh, sword and, and halberd soldiers. Okay, so here's Ostrava. Since we have not completed 1-3, even though we rescued him, he is still here. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, quickly dispatch these soldiers. And the reason for that is because Ostrava can sometimes get in trouble, uh, which is sad. But uh, Ostrava will basically wander from the little alcove that I showed you where he uh, will sometimes hide. He will wander from there to here and then just turn around. So I'm just going to stand here to make sure he doesn't aggro the ninja. Right, he doesn't. So he literally just keeps walking back and forth. I don't know why they make him do that. If they made Bjor of the Twin Fangs fall asleep, they should make Ostrava do the same thing. But sometimes he can get in trouble and wind up dying to certain enemies. So you want to make sure you clear his path. Uh, this way he does not die. Okay. Now that we're up here, uh, we have a couple of Halberd Knights to deal with. All right, so we can deal with them. They are dead. And if you need any help... Uh, you can bring things to Ostrava. He might help you. I don't recommend doing that because that can also result in his death. Which isn't the worst thing in the world. He's not the most helpful NPC. Uh, he does have somewhat of a tragic story, though. But Okay, so there's a couple of spear soldiers here now. All right. Deal with them. Okay. And then, as you can see, let's go to photo mode real quick. There is a fat official, three red eye knights, and four soldiers. An axe soldier, another axe soldier, and two crossbow soldiers. Uh, there's actually a third one back there. I think that's a sword soldier. So this is obviously really deadly, but the fog wall to penetrator is right there. And our first time through, I think once we reach this spot, we're going to get a cutscene with the fat official. I'm not sure what the, the distance trigger is. I think it's like right here or something. Shouldn't be much further than this. Okay, so this is the cutscene. The fat official is going to run into the fog wall. Taunting us to follow. He is constantly eluding danger. Alright, so as long as we have the thief ring equipped, the... Oh man, there's actually two more soldiers. Jesus. As long as we have the thief ring equipped, the red eye knight should not aggro. At least for a little while. And we should be able to deal with most of these soldiers. Uh... And if you have any spells, now's a good time to use them. I'm not sure how much damage mine would do, because I really don't have much magic power. Okay. Well, unfortunately, that just aggroed the, the Red Eye Knights. Really, that was not my plan, I swear. Okay, so. Uh, there are three Red Eye Knights. Two of them, all three of them are wielding uh, spears and shields. So these guys are going to be a little tough. What I recommend doing is before fighting them, just get all your treasure, because you don't want to have to come back here uh, for all this. Okay, so luckily a couple of them de -aggroed. Pretty sure I got all the treasure here. All right, so I'm just going to be excessive, and I'm going to heal all the way up. And then let's see if we can target one of them. Pepper him with the spell just to get him aggroed. All right, and then hopefully we can bait out a backstab here. Nope. Okay, so we're only going to fight two, which is helpful. That's, that's not bad. It could be worse. I am terrible at parrying spears. Ugh, God. Juicy hit. Oof. Yikes. Man, these guys are so scary. Can I begin to exaggerate how scary these guys are? All right, but luckily with our plus 10 weapon, uh, we're able to deal some damage. Great, so two of them are down. That was wonderful. Try to just get try to get one on one, but at worst, don't go more than two on one. The thief ring causes enemies to drop aggro. Um, so as long as we can kill this guy without messing up, we are good to go for the boss. And if oh no, Ugh. how dare you? Jesus, bro. Okay, so he's down. Great. So that is all the enemies of 1-3 taken care of. And now it's time for the boss. And since we rescued Bjor of the Twin Fangs, he is just going to be waiting for us in the boss room. So it, this is not like Dark Souls where 
you know, if you rescue an NPC, they become available to be summoned. Uh, in Demon Souls, Bior is actually the only NPC that will ever help you in a fight. Um, but um, rescuing him means he's just going to help us. We don't have to summon. We don't have to be in body form. Nothing. So once you're ready, we're going to go fight Penetrator. And this is a fairly... It, the fight is scarier than it is. Or it looks scarier than it is. You can actually see Bior the Twin Fangs through there. That's him right there. Um, basically, Penetrator is a melee boss. Uh, he two-hands his giant sword. And when it's on fire... And he sort of holds it above, or, you know, in line with his head. He's going to do a lunge attack. And if you get hit with that lunge attack, it's basically a grab. And it will almost certainly one-shot you unless you're in body form. It's really deadly. So when that is happening, you just want to just roll past him this way you get through it. Uh, if you have Bjor the Twin Fangs in this fight, it's mostly a spectator uh, event. Like, Bjor can kill this boss on his own. Uh, if you notice he's getting a little overwhelmed... Uh, just attack Penetrator, and he'll start attacking you, and that gives Bjor a chance to sort of uh, reset his AI because he also has a crossbow that he will sometimes try to use uh, mostly ineffectively. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Okay, so once you're ready, go ahead through the fog wall, and then we can watch the cutscene. Okay, so the fat official is not the boss. Um, instead, it's going to be the guy murdering this fat official and stealing our revenge. I mean, this fat official has taunted us since the beginning of the game. Um, he taunted us just all the time. So, unfortunately, we don't get to kill that guy, but Penetrator does it for us. And Penetrator is one of the sickest-looking bosses in Souls history. And since Bior is here, uh, Bior is going to help us out. And you can see, you know, Bior is going to take some damage. Hopefully, oh god, he got hooked up. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and attack Penetrator while he just chucks Bjor around the room. And then this should cause... Oh my god, Penetrator still is on Bjor. This is so weird. I want to show you how much damage Bjor does. Hit him. There you go. See, Bjor just chunks the boss. Wow, okay. So I don't want Bjor to die, so I'm going to sort of take over here while my dog barks. Donner, it's okay. It's okay. Donner, it's all right. Okay, so the boss is now on me. And he has several lunge attacks. Now he's going to be on Bjor. So when that happens, we can basically just go after the boss ourselves. I'll let Bjor get the final hit on him. Bang. So, Penetrator, again, not really that hard. And if you have Bjor, Bjor just steals his attention. Uh, unfortunately, Bjor did not set a great example there. And he didn't take care of him. Uh, Bjor sort of the predecessor to both the Onion Knight in Dark Souls, uh, Siegmeier as well as uh, Iron Tarkus. And in Dark Souls 1, it, Iron, uh, there's a, an NPC summon named uh, Dark uh, Black Iron Tarkus or something like that, or just Tarkus, and he can basically solo Iron Golem for you. Uh, but anyway, Bjor has uh, this giant two-handed sword, as well as a crossbow. Uh, if you don't have Bjor with you, I recommend watching my guide on Penetrator. I do fight him solo in that. Um, Basically, the number one attack to avoid is the Flaming Sword Lunge. That will uh, hook you up and sort of chuck you around the room. So you want to be very careful. So before we get invaded here, uh, we're going to pick up the Silver Demon Soul, and then we're going to warp back to the Nexus. Um, yeah, so that's 1-3. It's a long level uh, without, honestly, much going on in it. It's just like a lot of sort of looping around and around. But there are a couple of great NPCs to rescue. I'm going to bump up my Endurance here. And then if you're looking for Bjor, he is going to be over here near the uh, Valley of Defilement, Archstone of the Chieftain. You can speak with him. And then Yuria the Witch is going to be right over here. And she will sell you spells in exchange for boss souls. You do need to talk to her a few times in order for her to be okay with selling you uh, spells. But that's it. That's 1-3. That's how you do all of 1-3. Don't forget to bring your uh, official set back to Stockpile Thomas and just dump all that back in your storage, this way you don't have to bring it through 1-4. All right, so that is it. Uh, the next guide, we will go through uh, the King's Tower, which is level 1-4 to the final boss of the game, or the actually, truly really the, the penultimate boss of the game, uh, but it will lead to the end game. And that's it. All right, so if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Demon Souls Remake, 
please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. If you, yeah, then that's it. <laughs> Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I'll be Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.